where your coworkers will catch you when you fall, to a more intense thing, such as the Spaghetti Marshmallow Tower, where you have to build the tallest possible tower with very few resources. And it really helps build uh, rapport between team members. So team training is really good to build motivation to your team, uh, help them trust one another and trust you as a leader, as well as helps them set goals for themselves and identify strengths and weaknesses, and overall helps them to become more productive in the workplace. So team training can really be done both in-house and externally. Uh, there are specific companies that go out to train your employees uh, through different kinds of activities. And uh, it can actually be done online now, too, thanks to the use of webcams and things like that. So managerial training. This really goes for, it's given to candidates who are looking for a promotion. You know, you want to make sure that the employee that you think would be a good manager actually has the skills and the knowledge to be one. So that you have to try to develop them through this training. So managerial training really covers both soft skills and technical skills. You know, you want your candidate to be very well rounded. So you want them to be able to lead and delegate, but you also want them to be able to uh, perform in the workplace. You want them to know how the organization performs and operates. So an uh, example of this would be MassTech, and they train their managers to uh, go through this one skill a month program. And with this program, the managers, they will master this one skill in hopes that they become more developed and more well-rounded as a manager and as a leader. So the average number of training days for a mass tech manager is around 7.8 days. So it just goes to show that they have a pretty big focus on um, developing their leaders and in order for them to uh, perform well in the workplace and lead their employees as well. So safety training really ensures that employees are protected from work-related accidents. You know, you want to make sure that your employees come back the next day safe so that they also don't sue your company. So just, it's, for your, it's in your best interest that you train <coughs> safety as well. So safety training really is critical for organizations that work with hazardous materials or chemicals. You know, these things can really be life-threatening or like harm their, just harm their body in general. So if you want to keep your workforce healthy and safe, you really want to make sure that they're trained in, um, with the different materials that they have to work with. So here you see a few different uh, trainings that you might have to go through for safety training, from eye protection to first aid to food safety to uh, hearing protection training, as well as, as I mentioned, hazardous materials. And they're all very important depending on which organization that you work with. So the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, it, it's really a, um, it deals with safety and health enforcement in the U.S. So they go out to your, your organization and train your employees to see if they're um, informed about different safety and health regulations in the workplace. So my team training experience is with the student <coughs> university programmers. We're a club here on campus. Um, we have events. We put on different events for students like uh, Roglo, High Bash, Movie Night. You guys might have heard of them. And uh, for all of eBoard, they had us come out during the summer to do our training. And it was we did things like whitewater rafting. We did uh, the tower challenge I mentioned earlier. And it really helped us become a more close knit. Uh, unit and it really helped us perform better during the year as a team. So my second training experience was with community safety assistance and uh, I did this last year and basically we went around campus to ensure that everyone was following policy, you know, not drinking and uh, smoking on campus, things like that. And for that job, um, they trained us in first aid, uh, active shooter training, and they taught us how to, um, they taught us about emergency evacuation plans so that we could be better first responders. And uh, up next, Rob's going to talk to you guys about on-the-job coaching. Thank you, Brandon. So, 
uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about different training and delivery methods. So first up, I want to talk about on-the-job coaching. So what is it? How do you pick the coach? So what happens is the company picks a selected employee, and that employee is tasked with uh, kind of mentoring and teaching a newer employee the skills that it takes to get the job done. And a lot of that uh, decision making depends on the personality of the coach. Um, a disadvantage with on-the-job coaching is it's very dependent on the trainer. So if the trainer has a bad attitude, poor communication skills, or just bad work habits, then the trainee really isn't going to know what to do and how to perform the job well. Uh, Web-based training is another form of a training delivery method. That really is dependent on technology. Technology facilitates the training there. There's two types, synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous training really uh, is instructional-led facilitating versus asynchronous training, which is you basically doing it on your own. Um, advantages and disadvantages, I don't know why those lines kind of messed up there, but an advantage of web-based training is that nine times out of ten, you guys are always going to have your technology on you. You're easily accessible. You can log in. A disadvantage to that would be it's impersonable. Uh, you're sitting in front of the computer all day doing training, not really interacting with other employees or customers, so that could get a little tiring at times. Considerations for web-based training. There's three things you want to consider. Um, do you have to pay fees? Is it uh, a one-time fee, or do you have to consistently make payments? Um, does it fit with your schedule? Are you allotted the time to do the training? And there's one more that's just escaping my memory at the moment. Uh, another type of training is job shadowing. What is that? Job shadowing is where a person who is already employed with the firm kind of um, follows around a higher up employee and what they do is they kind of get a feel for how to do the job, how to do it well, and kind of the niches that uh, go with performing the job. Disadvantages to shadowing, again, um, a disadvantage to this would be if the person you were shadowing has bad um, has bad habits, takes shortcuts, is lazy with their work. Because more likely than not, if you're shadowing that person, you're going to pick up those bad habits as well. Vestibule training. So this is a little different. Instead of training on the job with vestibule training, you are doing it near the work site. And by near the work site, I mean you're doing it in conference rooms, lecture rooms, and classrooms. Uh, you want to do it outside the workplace because it gives you more time uh, to really understand how to do the job and how to do it well. A perfect example of this is Macy's. What Macy's does extremely well is that before they throw their new employees on the floor, they have them uh, go into a lecture room or a conference room and they teach them how to use the cash register properly, how to handle uh, different customers and how to handle different situations. That way when they go back on the floor, they know how to do that and how to do it well. Uh, Macy's does use it, but it is also used for technical training, safety training, and quality training. Safety training is very important that vestibule training is used for because, um, for example, a construction site. You don't want a new employee not knowing what to do to go onto a construction site and possibly get injured. There's high potential for that, so vestibule training is used for that. International assignment training. So this was interesting because when I was doing my research on this, uh, with international assignment training, up to 40% of the international assignments actually get terminated. And that's due to poor training and not putting in enough effort into understanding the region you're going to and how to handle that. Um, some training topics that you should definitely look into if you're uh, dealt with an international assignment is uh, you should look into the cultural differences and similarities, uh, the social norms and etiquette, and the language skills. You don't want to be assigned... Um, you don't want to be assigned in Italy and not know how to speak Italian, or you don't want to know uh, poor etiquette to rub people the wrong way, so that's very important. Uh, brown bag lunch training, not brown bag lunch training. <laughs> um, that's basically, it's self-explanatory. So the training is done during the lunch hours. Um, what it is, is you go, you sit down with a bunch of your employees, you have a very relaxed, casual lunch with them, and someone comes up and talks about a personal experience they had. They share it with um, other employees, and it's really a, a team training conducive environment with brown bag lunch uh, delivery method. So like I said, with um, the brown bag training method, you have an employee that goes up there and tells uh, an experience that they had. It could be a trip that they went on, and then they explain how it bettered them, what they learned from them, what they can bring back to the workplace. But a disadvantage with this is that attendance is low. 
uh, employees are already working nine hours a day, eight hours a day, and they're not going to want to kind of work more during their lunch break. That's their own personal time. So it's tough uh, on attendance to get people to join that. Uh, up next, we got mentoring and coaching. So what is mentoring, if you didn't know? Mentoring is, uh, or what is a mentor, perhaps? It is a trusted, we'll move on. Um, some disadvantages to mentoring, like on-the-job coaching, is that um, mentoring is more long-term than short-term. On-the-job coaching, you want to get the employee the skills and you want to get them out there. Mentoring, uh, you kind of have that person with you through thick and thin throughout your career, uh, throughout the place that you were working at. So a bad personal training experience I had was my first job. Uh, I worked at a pizzeria as a cook, and I had no training at all. I got thrown in there, was expected to know how to make like chicken marsal, salads, uh, all that good stuff. And it took me a while to get my bearings about me because I really had no prior uh, cooking experience. So that was poor. A good training experience I had was uh, when I caddied. I currently am a caddy, but I do have a different summer job for um, this upcoming summer. But with caddying, I shadowed. I didn't just go out there and uh, help the golfers. I, when I first started out, I had to, um, I had to shadow an experienced caddy. Uh, that way, I could pick up on his experience and learn how to do the job and how to do it well. So up next, we got Lay, and he's going to talk about uh, designing a training program. Hi, I'm going to talk about the how to design a training program. So, before be able to design a training program, you have to know the framework. So, there's a several steps for a framework. The first step of the framework is the data, assa data assessment. So, there's a three type of assessment. The first one is the organi organizational assessment. So, this is uh, all for your company. What's your company need? So you will need to know what's your company's weakness and what's your company's strengths. And you, so your employee will be able to use your strengths and uh, handle the, your company's weakness. And for the second assessment is occupational assessment, or you can call it like uh, task assessment. This is like, uh, so what, are gonna, what, what are you gonna do in a job? This is about like a basic skill. So you wanna make sure like you will be able to do the, 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 the job in your work. And for the last assessment is the individual assessment. This is about like all the people are different. Some people can do this job, but some people cannot. So you want to make sure all your employee can do their job. They will able to finish their job. So and for the next is uh, learning objectives. The first learning objective is be able to explain the policy, uh, such as uh, uh, sexual harassment, and also you will give the example on sexual harassment. And for second one, you have to be able to show. You have to be able to show your employee how to take the customer order. And for third, perform. You have to uh, to show your employee like how to do the uh, customer analysis by using company software. And for fourth, understand and analyze. Also, you have to use your own company software to. And to to do the new uh, expense tra tracking, for for the next one is explain explain the safety. Uh, safety is important, so everything is based on safety. Uh, so safety is forced. And for the next one is explain the type of communication and style uh, styles and the strategies. So you want you want to make sure like the the communication skills you give the employee is efficiency, and uh, time and uh, ethics. This is like when you get the customer compliance, you will be able to keep your profession. And for the last one, effectively dialogue to employees. So you want your employee get what you say and remember it. And so you want to effect effectively. And uh, learning styles. So there is a three types of learning style. The first type is virtual learner. So for this kind of for this type of learner, they always have the picture of their ex experience. So they always say something like. I can say what I'm doing. I can say it's right. So, and for the second type of learner is auditory uh, learner. So, this type of learner they always learn stuff by by hearing. So they want to you explain to them or talk to them. So, and they always say something like, "I can hear right. Yes, this is sounds good." 
And uh, for the last uh, learning style is uh, kinesi 